championship. Men and women are peculiar. Each of us, all of us, are characterized by as many particularities, preferences, and preoccupations as can possibly be imagined. When you look from a distance, the beach looks uniform. But when you get closer, every pebble is different. And so are we. Yeah, there is a constant in all our lives, and that constant is change, with all its joys and sorrows. And change is at its most profound when we're growing, when we're maturing, when we're developing, as the Honourable Lady from Edinburgh Southwest said. Some changes are permanent, some are ephemeral, but for both, coping with them means learning from others, sometimes others who know much more. Sometimes we need to ask. Sometimes we need to question. And if in the secret garden of love, which is adorned with flowers of all kinds, some blooms are perpetual and some fade, if in that secret garden we're told that what we choose is no longer permitted, that we need to be forced to grow a different flower altogether, can that be right? Can that be squared with the eclecticism, with the strangeness and particularity of life? For me, it can't. Exploring desire is a journey, a journey we all travel. And to be guided and counseled and advised sometimes helps us to navigate our way on that difficult journey. So to prohibit guidance, in my judgment, is a short step from a ban on friendship, which may make burdens lighter, suffocating the fire of fear. Could we in conscience really want to make consensual, quiet conversations illegal? No one in this chamber, no one who contributes to this debate, wants uh, cruel inhumane, spiteful interventions in those peculiar, particular, very different lives. But we can't surely ban the freedom to speak, the freedom to put our case, the freedom to converse. I glory in our differences, in all their richness. And I congratulate in particular the Honourable Gentleman for Kakaldi and Calden B for what I thought was an outstanding speech. But life is complicated, and the midst of its confusion is the torch of free speech and free thought that burns brightly. I will happily give way, of course. Thank you. I'll take one moment to give way to that. And um, just on his point in terms of life is complicated, life is complicated for a number of people, yeah. including the many BME people yeah. who, till this day, still haven't had the courage to come out because of the stigma, because of the fear. Does he not appreciate that these practices make it even harder for those people to speak out and be well, their true selves? Well, if, well, if the Honourable Lady is speaking of what I described as, as cruel and spiteful uh, interventions into, into quiet lives, or sometimes less quiet ones, then yes, of course. But if she's referring to the kind of conversations that I described that help people to navigate their way through life, then uh, sh would she really want those prohibited? Made unlawful? I can't think she would. So when we consider cancellations, bans, and prohibitions on uh, whatever grounds, but particularly on the grounds of activists who legitimize them on, on the basis that they're progressive and that anyone who opposes them is a heretic, I say that if be part of a crusade against puritanical, militant transsexuals. If that is heresy, then sign me in. If it's heresy, if it's heresy to say that sex is a biological fact, then count me in. Because on that basis, I'm proud to be a heretic. Thank you, Madam Chair. A real pleasure to say, uh, serve under your chairship.